Not the most important, but definitely the most emotionally heated issue that was introduced in the recent election is GMO labeling. Proposition 37 introduced the issue by stating that if this measure were to pass, one, California would require labeling of raw or processed food offered to the sale of consumers if made from plants or animals with genetically engineered, with genetic material changed in specific ways. Two, prohibits the labeling or advertising of such food or other processed foods as natural. And three, exempts foods that are certified organic, unintentionally produced with genetically engineered material, made from animals fed or injected with engine genetically engineered material, but not and genetic genetically engineered themselves, processed with or containing only small amounts of genetically engineered ingredients, administered for the treatment of medical conditions, sold for immediate consumption, such as restaurants and or, I mean, and alcoholic beverages. This measure was a step towards an honest food nation. The purpose of Prop 37 was to help inform families about the potential damage and side effects of genetically modified foods. We have the right to know what is in our foods. My three stock issues. One, there are dangers when consuming GMOs that are not that people are not aware of. Many citizens may not even be aware of the existence of GMOs. And the consumption of GMOs have proven to harm the health of people. Two, there is a disconnect between the people, between citizens and the food they eat. This lack of awareness leads to uninformed decisions about potentially negative health consequences, and so it is the right of the people to know what is in their foods. And three, through labeling, citizens can access their right to verify whether or not their foods are or contain GMOs, which may or may not lead to healthier and informed consensus among the population. But the importance is that citizens get what they want, which is the right to know what is in the foods they are consuming. My plan of action is that California should pass the measure requiring the labeling, the labeling of GMO products. Significance. Present dangers in GMO foods. GMOs can be put GMO studies have shown that GMO consumption can have negative implications in regards to our future generations. Secondly, the nation's well-being. Sorry. Overall negative implications come from GMO consumption to the nation's well-being. According to the Institute. According to the Institute Responsible of Technology, mice eating GM corn fed corn for long terms have fewer and smaller babies. For more than half more than half the babies of mother rats fed GM soy died within three weeks and were and were smaller. And testicles of mice and rats on GM soy changed significantly. By the third generation, most GM soy-fed hamsters lost the ability to have babies. What this means is that as we consume GM products and as the generations grow, we will become infertile and our women will become, will lose the ability to have babies. Second, the Academy also reported that several animal studies indicate serious health risks associated with GM foods, including infertility, immune problems, accelerated aging, faulty insulin regulation, and, the, and changes in major organs and the gastrointestinal system. The AAEM, American Academy of Environmental Medicine, asked physicians to advise patients to avoid GM foods. Inherency. Miscommunication. Inherency. There's a miscommunication towards the citizens. Food manufacturers are not honest about whether or not the food they sell to consumers are or contain GMOs. Again, from the Institute, of Respo from the Institute Responsible for Technology, before the FDA decided to allow GMOs into food without labeling, which was in 1991, the FDA scientists have repeatedly warned GM food companies that GM foods can create unpredictable, 
hard to detect side effects including allergies, toxins, new diseases, and nutritional problems. They urged long-term safety studies, but were ignored. Inadequate current... <coughs> the current system does not allow for concerned citizens to easily access their right to know if GMOs are in their foods. Under the existing law, California agencies are not specifically required to regulate GE genetically engineered foods. However, the Depa Department of Public Health is responsible for regulating the safety and labeling of most foods, says the general attorney in a analysis of the title and summary of Proposition 37. Devious food firms? The No on Prop 37 campaign was overly funded based based their studies on based on a study on their own funding and money-based incentives to make voters and taxpayers susceptible to the No on 37 propaganda. According to Karen Klein, opinionist for the LA Times, the No on 37 campaign bases most of its claims on higher food prices on a study that it paid for. And so the findings are hard to believe. Also, according to Ballotpedia, as of November 3rd, 2012, about 45.6 million had been donated to the No on 37 campaign effort. How would this solve anything? Prop 37 shows that it has a majority support of the population before the false advertisement began to air. According to Mark Bittman, a writer for the New York Times, polls showed that Prop 37 had overwhelming popularity, roughly 65% for to 20% against, within and 15% undecided. As advertisement came, it changed. Food companies have ways to label GMOs with minimal increase in food costs. Karen Klein, again from the Los Angeles Times, claims that maybe every ingredient list we see today will, would, would have contained genetically engineered ingredients. Such labeling would result, in a, would result in insignificant increases in food costs, no matter the, what the industry tells you. Regardless, food companies change their labels one way or another. And those are my reasons for wanting Prop 37 to pass. You've used one minute. 